Forum uh, is also with us uh, from India Bulls Ventures Forum. What's your reading of the markets? The broader end of the markets in the last couple of days at least has uh, seen deeper cuts. But uh, is there any cause for concern? So fundamentally, how are you viewing the markets right now? Yeah, so fundamentally, we really like the markets. The fact that market has corrected over the past few sessions. But again, we have an overhang of you know trade wars between US and China. So they are into talks right now. So two days is like a wait and watch. But nevertheless, there are very good stocks, you know, opportunities. We always feel that correction is healthy and given the fact that the Q4 is coming good for most of the companies especially in the large caps hence that uh, mid, there are also mid cap companies which are posting very good set of numbers and the growth in the companies is bringing the valuations down hence we feel that this correction should be taken as a very good buying opportunity and one must look at long term horizon and should start investing at the current levels. All right, so you are still a buyer at these levels. Uh, we're not waiting for a further correction as such. All right, let's put the focus then on uh, the aviation stocks because after the sort of results that we got from an Indigo yesterday, uh, this really is the space that is in focus. Indigo, of course, under quite a bit of pressure. We're also seeing Jet Airways see cuts in excess of 10%. I think it's about 11.5% down at the moment. Indigo itself seeing cuts of about 10% as we speak. And SpiceJet is the other one to watch out for. 7.5% cuts coming in uh, for this counter. Of course, a lot of concerns uh, weighing on Indigo uh, at the moment. Of course, we saw that fall in the profit number. It fell 73% uh, this time around in the fourth quarter. This, of course, on the back of higher fuel costs. Yields have come down 5.6%, even as their load factor has risen. Patia, the interim CEO at Indigo, said that they expect their capacity to increase going forward. Listen into what he had to say. Our flight cancellation rate was higher, especially during the month of March due to the ongoing issues with some of our nails. Fuel prices increased by 11.6%, which led to an overall increase in cask by 7.4%. We expect a year-over-year -year capacity increase in terms of ASKs of 18% for the first quarter of 2019 and 25% for the full year of fiscal 2019. All right, so that is the management of an indigo. Uh, we also had a number of brokerages uh, weigh in on the counter. We have Monica Valdia joining in now with some highlights from that con call by the management as well as what brokerages had to say on an indigo following those results. Monica? Indigo announced their Q4 earnings yesterday and the weak results reflected on the stock price today. The stock witnessed a market cap loss of almost 14,000 crore in the last four trading sessions. Let's go through the management con call highlights then to understand why the street is cautious on the counter. Indigo management said the Pratt & Whitney engine related issues will take some time to resolve and they have received new engines to replace all the affected ones. They also said that they'll continue to purchase aircraft depending on the free cash flow going forward. Indigo also expects year-on-year -year CASK, that is cost per available seat kilometer, to increase by 18% in Q1 FI19 and 25% in FI19. The airline is also considering proposal to purchase more wide-bodied aircraft going forward. Talking about the brokerages, then Morgan Stanley has cut the target to Rs. 1205 from Rs. 1213 and has maintained an equal weight rating on the stock. With PLFs already at a record high, yields will be key to watch in FI19. Indigo also announced dividend cut from Rs 34 in FI17 to Rs 6 for FI18, which implies that they are gearing up to buy a sizable number of planes. Well, as per Morgan Stanley's estimates, Indigo will spend Rs 5,400 crore in FI19 and will buy around 15 ATRs and 15 A320 NEOs. Morgan Stanley has also cut Interglobe's FI19 and FI20 EPS as they assume that yields in FI19 will be flat and will rise 3% in FI20. City, on the other hand, has downgraded the stock to sell from buy and has cut the target to 1240 rupees from 1600 rupees on back of week earnings. Pankhil, all three of your aviation stocks have taken a knock and especially an Indigo and a Jet. Uh, Indigo, in fact, uh, till a few days ago was at 52-week highs. From that point, it's been a big, big fall that you've had on the counter. Let's just pull up a five-day chart uh, on this one to uh, give us a better picture. And similarly for a Jet Airways as well, has been correcting for a while now. I mean, what's going on over here and would you be shorting these stocks at current levels? 
obviously not i won't <laughs> shot at this point of time because it has already taken a support at around 1119 mark and uh, today's low is almost at around that point of uh, that point so i think uh, i i won't go short at this point of time but i would try to go long on each and every dips at this point of time until and unless it breaks the level of 1110 on the downside so i would be very much positive because it it has given a 3 day uh, movement on the downside so there should be some uh, co uh, short cover covering coming in and i feel that uh, we can again see the levels of around 1250 and 1300 on the higher side All right, twelve fifty, thirteen hundred levels at the moment. Though trading at three month lows on an indigo. What about the other two, Spice Jet and Jet Airways? Only because uh, you know they seem to be correcting ahead of numbers, and uh, perhaps we could see some sort of reaction there. But uh, as for the charts, how are they looking at the moment? Overall, they are correcting just because the overall sec uh, sector right. is going into correction. So I don't think so. Even uh, Jet and uh, Spice Jet should be any of the problems. Uh, I feel even one can go for a long position at this point of time in Jet Airways with a stop loss of. Around 510 on the downside for a target of around 535 and 540 on the higher side. All right, uh, that is on aviation. But the top loser on the street right now is HCL Technologies. It's a seven percent cut on that counter, and it is the biggest drag on the markets right now as well. Big big concerns coming in for this one. Let's just understand a little more from Urmil Shah, research analyst at IDBI. Uh, Urmil, let help us understand what's going on. I mean, yes, uh, the numbers weren't all that great, but were largely in line with uh, what the street was estimating. The guidance a little on the cautious side, but uh, last couple of days uh, the cuts have been very very severe on an HCL technology. Why is the street so concerned about this one? Yeah. So as you said, the uh, the guidance uh, was a, a clear miss to us. Uh, you know, especially considering the recent acquisition of uh, C three I Solutions and Axian Corporation, uh, we were in fact expecting that uh, the U S dollar uh, uh, guidance should uh, have come between twelve uh, to fourteen percent. So clearly, there is a miss of one and a half percentage points uh, to our expectations. And uh, we know not just uh, for IT, but in, in across other sectors, uh, you know, you have seen that uh, you know uh, wherever the growth visibility is good or has improved, uh, the stocks and have done well, and uh, they have done exactly uh, the uh, opposite. Uh, uh, you know, when uh, the outlook isn't uh, uh, as expected or. uh you know slightly muted uh, as compared to what the street is expecting so that's what was the case with hcl tech and i think that's where the stock has corrected right urmil uh, good afternoon i also wanted to ask you about the ebit margin because quarter on quarter it was actually completely flat uh, but this is in spite of the sort of tailwinds that were expected on the currency front uh, how do you see the margin picture really playing out as we go into the rest of, rest of fiscal 19 so we are uh, we are uh, uh, pretty okay with the margin outlook we are expecting 20 bps improvement uh, on a full year basis uh, uh, and uh, at the mid midpoint of the guidance uh, so i don't think uh, and and our the currency assumption is at 65 and a half uh, so uh, the currency on a full year basis for fy19 does provide a fair bit of cushion on margin front and uh, uh, we believe that whatever investments which uh, they have are uh, done in fi 17 and 18 in, in ip uh, that should provide a cushion uh, for uh, any kind of margin headwind uh, that should come from uh, say the likes of uh, c3a solutions uh, where uh, you know the profitability is just in uh, low single digit So essentially, Urmil, uh, what I understand correctly is a legacy business is not generating that much uh, of a return, and uh, the new uh, businesses or the digital push uh, is still to bear fruit. Is that a correct understanding? And in that context, uh, how do the next, how does the current financial year as well as uh, the next year look for an HCL tech? So that is the case with uh, uh, all the companies across the sector. Uh, of course, uh, we know for. Uh, uh, it, uh, only for dcs even the uh, traditional business has been growing for others uh, uh, we know uh, in some quarters they have uh, the traditional business has grown and in some quarters it has uh, declined uh, for hcl uh, we know the disappointment uh, is basically coming from uh, you know uh, the organic growth outlook of uh, just about uh, you know of 6 to 7% for fy19 uh, that should have uh, been uh, you know near to uh, near to uh, 10% because last year when uh, the industry as a whole was uh, uh, seeing 
softness they did very well and for fy19 when the likes of uh, tcs and enforcers have given a relatively positive outlook uh, hcl should also have done uh, uh, better than uh, fy18 uh, that's where the big disappointment has come so then would it be uh, you know the fact that hcl tech perhaps is lagging behind in terms of investing in the digital side of business that's really holding this counter back uh, this company back because uh, the likes of a tcs have actually outdone themselves if you look at the fourth quarter performance yeah you can see so because uh, hcl has taken a more aggressive approach towards mna and uh, mna might not uh, play out the way uh, in uh, uh, as it is expected so and more so were on the timeline of uh, performance uh, whereas the likes of tcs uh, they have built the capabilities uh, largely in house and there you have a much better control on the execution as well as the timeline uh, of the benefits coming in Point taken, Urmil. Then, uh, so what's your current call on an HCL tech and within the big four tech companies? Where does this lie in your order of preference? So, uh, it it continues uh, to be uh, the cheapest among the big four. Uh, so, uh, on on a consolidated basis, still uh, we expecting a double digit growth in FY 19 and 20. And given that uh, perspective, I think after today's uh, decline, uh, you know, uh, at about 12 times on. Uh, FI20, uh, I think uh, you know the worst is factored in. The stock might not perform absolutely in the near. Uh, a target price of 1100 should be achieved. So that's our target price. All right. So can uh, see good returns from a one-year perspective, maybe 20, 25% from current levels, and could be a buy on dips opportunity. Thanks uh, so much for joining in, Urmil, and helping us understand the various dynamics uh, that uh, you have to look at uh, when analyzing HCL Tech. But last. Uh, Three sessions. This one is down over 12 percent uh, in trade. That is an important one to watch out for. Let's see where uh, this stock uh, uh, goes uh, next. In the last one month, it's down about four odd percent. Year to date, and in the last one year, hasn't done all that bad. In fact, uh, barring the fall that's coming uh, this week, was one of the smarter performers from the last cap IT universe. Uh, Pankhil, on the charts, how does this look to you? Would you also be looking to add HCL Tech on dips, or there could be some more weakness on cards here? Oh, I feel uh, I would add it on the dips because the major support level is at 900 mark. So I I don't think so that 900 mark would be broken because uh, that is a major double bottom mark. And uh, as per the oscillators, the max comes down till 900 only. So I feel one can go for a uh, long position around 900 mark, and thereafter we can see a, a rally coming in again. In the whole IT pack, I feel uh, HCL Tech and TCS. should be the uh, best gainers in the whole year All right, HCL Tech and TCS, the two best uh, IT gainers for the year. You can get in by on dips at 900, 1100. Of course, was a, a, a sort of a fundamental target for this count as well. We'll take a quick break. Uh, we'll get some trading ideas uh, from Urmil as well. Discuss a few st- uh, sectors as well uh, with Forum, and of course, put the spotlight on some big uh, movers in trade uh, today. Biocon, HCC, all that on the radar. Stay with us. Welcome back. You are tuned into BTBI, and the show, of course, is the trading day. Markets are on their part a little uh, muted in trade right now, but there are several stocks that are on the move. Let's start with the second biggest gainer on the Nifty right now, which is a Sun Pharma. A very strong move coming in on this counter, three and a half percent up on a day when most of your other pharma names are in fact languishing in trade. The likes of a Biocon, in fact, seeing a bigger cut right now. But Sun Pharma is at the highs of the day at the moment, up over three percent in trade right now. Pankil, what's going on with this counter? Or if we see the technically chart, uh, there there was a trend line resistance at 530 mark, and currently it has crossed that 530 mark. If we see the oscillators, even they have given the breakout from its trend line resistance. Basically, the RSI had RSI had placed a trend line resistance at 52 mark, and it has already crossed on the daily charts. I feel there is still positivity going on on the stock, and one can go for a BTST trade in Sun Pharma with a stop loss of 520 on the downside for a target of around 540 and 545 by tomorrow. Uh, just uh, uh, as you were talking pankil somebody has sent me uh, speculation and this is purely speculation based there is no confirmation on this we will try and uh, uh, of course touch our sources and get it but uh, again speculation has risen on a halol and this is something that we notice uh, time and again on a sun pharma uh, possibly these are just rumors once again so do not read too much into it but the, again uh, the street seems to have begun speculating something or some development in and around halol which of course has been a key overhang for the stock all this while so maybe there is some optimism coming 
came on, coming around that, but there is no confirmation on that. And this is purely speculation at the moment that there is some movement on the halol resolution for a Sun Pharma. But even a couple of your power names, uh, Pankhil, are on the move right now. Uh, two names for you. Uh, let me know which chart you like better. Power Grid and an NTPC. NTPC, in fact, is the third biggest gainer on the Nifty right now with a 2.5% up move. Uh, I like Power Grid in the whole pack because it has given a breakout from its trendline resistance, which was at around 204. And today making at high, uh, highs around 207, 208. So I feel one can go for a buy in power grid be just because the oscillators, the formation of that oscillators are superb at this point of time. And we can uh, we have also seen the breakout of the Fibonacci uh, percentage of around 32% on the higher side. So I feel yes, one can go for a buy in power grid uh, for a target of 210 and 212 on the higher side. All right, so power grid uh, is the pick uh, there from the uh, p the power space, of course. Uh, but let's put the focus now on some exclusive details that we're picking up uh, from New Delhi. We have Meghna Mittal joining in on the phone line on this uh, news that there is no rate cut, uh, no GST rate cuts on the agenda. This is uh, in terms of the Friday GST Council meet. We're also learning the government is uh, planning to consider a proposal to make the GST network a 100% government-owned company. Meghna, what are you picking up here? What can you tell us about what's on the agenda then tomorrow? Yes, uh, there are no rate cuts happening because remember there is this uh, council meeting is through video conferencing, so there are no rate cuts on the agenda as such. There are also uh, no there will be no discussion on bringing petrol or diesel and natural gas under GST, so there, that is also not on on the agenda. One important thing that is on the agenda is making GSTN uh, a hundred percent government owned company. Right now, uh, forty nine percent is owned by centre and state, and fifty one percent is owned by private players which includes ICICI um, and other players. So then this, uh, what my sources are telling me, that making GSN a 100% government company is definitely on the agenda tomorrow. So they, there will be a buyback kind of thing that the government will be going for. Uh, so government will have to uh, invest 5.1 crore, that is because the total uh, investment in GSTN is 10 crore. So 51% more it has, if it has to buy back, it will be 5.1 crore investment that the government will have to make. Um, apart from this, uh, there will be uh, more things on the agenda on the front of tax simplification. There could be in principle approval on the simplification of tax filing of GST. Um, there are two models which have been proposed by Infosys and the GST and chairman. So there is a new um, you know, form that that is in the process, which could be a merger of both the two, both the two uh, proposals that have come uh, based on invoice matching. So there could be an in-principle approval on this as of now. So these are what is likely on the agenda tomorrow in the GST Council meet. All right, Meghna, thanks a lot for bringing us uh, these exclusive details. So no rate cut on the agenda. There was some sort of an expectation that we could see some uh, rationalization across various sectors. But learning now that at least at tomorrow's meeting, no rate cut. And of course, the government are planning to consider the proposal to make the GST network a 100% government-owned company. Uh, but that said, let's uh, put the attention then back on the markets because uh, the Nifty is uh, still holding steady with cuts about three tenths of a percent. Where we are seeing the pressure in trade today is, of course, uh, the broader end of the market. So the mid-cap seeing cuts in excess of 1%, uh, seeing quite a bit of pressure coming in uh, for the mid-cap space. Of course, uh, you know, we've spoken about, uh, we, we will speak about uh, some stocks uh, specifically like the likes of a Biocon, but we're seeing a lot of pressure specifically from uh, the realty pack, uh, uh, overall realty, uh, some of the counters that are seeing quite a bit of stress. A lot of the mid-cap financial names as well that had been doing well recently also coming under pressure, LIC Housing Finance, uh, uh, Chola Mandalam Investment, all these counters coming under pressure at the moment. Forum just coming on uh, the mid caps is a space that you track closely where really are you seeing the opportunities at a time like this yeah so we're seeing opportunities in automobile sectors uh, seeing that a mid cap as a whole the index is really rich in valuations we would want to only have a uh, you know bottom to top approach which means that the stocks which are trading at very cheap valuations we would only want to go for such kind of companies again the stocks which are very highly leveraged we would want to stay away from those companies uh, so now again for example if i say gn see the stock if we see this company has posted a very good set of numbers and again the ke uh, chemical segment which is doing really good you know which contributes almost 67 percent of the total revenue is again growing at a very good pace and again uh, if we look at the valuation front uh, the stock is only trading at just eight times you know fy 20 p multiple so when the entire mid cap index you know which is trading at such high valuations we still have stocks which is trading at single digit you know because of a highly growth and uh, 
again the very good thing is the company has cut down on its debt completely so there are stocks which are trading in the mid cap space with very less valuations so we would want to have a very stock specific approach rather than you know looking at the uh, index as a whole all right stock specific approach gnfc is the one uh, stock that forum is betting on we'll get a couple of uh, more of our picks as well but let me bring in uh, hiral to give us a lowdown on uh, biocon uh, fresh uh, usfd issues for them a uh, form 483 has been issued on uh, uh, the recent inspection of the bengaluru unit seven observations have been found hiral the observations are largely procedural in nature but the stock uh, and the street has uh, in fact given a negative verdict on this one what are the key overhangs here where has the stock fallen so much so overall, if you go to see uh, two things to this entire uh, scenario over here, wherein they've got seven USFD observations uh, for their Bangalore drug facility, and this is uh, from the USFDA. The USFDA completed the pre-approval inspection of the sterile drug production plant in Bangalore, and they've issued a Form 483 as well. Now, the observations are largely procedural in nature, however, aimed at continuous improvement. Apart from that, they've received a report from the European regulator as well, uh, post the inspection of the Bangalore unit was done and the European regulator has also listed around six observations. However, none have been classified as critical. Now, they, the management has indicated that they will be responding to the US as well as the European Union regulators uh, with a corrective action plan in a timely manner. Usually 15 days is the time period when they have to usually uh, give out the CAPA plan. So that's the time uh, when the, any actions will be taken. Now, the reason why we are seeing this kind of a reaction on the stock is because, uh, you know, Biocon's biosimilars, that is trusted Zumab, Pecfil, Grastim, as well as Glargine. Uh, these are nearly nearing approvals in the Europe as well as the uh, US markets. Now, uh, it was obvious that these inspections would be triggered as well on the back of the biosimilar approvals. However, uh, this kind of observation uh, in terms of the Form 483 could be a near-term setback as well uh, because the company will need to go ahead and resolve the issues uh, as soon as possible to get the biosimilars approved uh, because if all the uh, corrective action plans are not met until the time they do not get an EIR and an approval in terms of where uh, the U Bangalore facility is concerned. Uh, till then, what will happen is there is a possibility that the launch pipeline in terms of a biosimilars is concerned that could be delayed. Uh, so that's the reason why, which, why this has come as a setback and the company will need to resolve it ASAP to get uh, the biosimilars approved in the US as well as the European Union. All right, Hill. Thanks for getting us that update. Uh, so there are concerns for this one. That stock is down five and a half percent. Pankhil, uh, Biocon. Uh, do you see any trade over here? And Sun Pharma. Just revisit the call on that one because that is uh, now extended gains. It's up four percent uh, at the moment at five hundred and thirty-six odd. Fresh highs of the day on that count as well. Burun, I feel uh, th th it has give given a breakdown from its uh, for, uh, rising channel breakdown. I'm basically talking about Biocon. So basically, I think it can come down till 520 on the downside because 520 is a major support level for Biocon at this point of time. So I would prefer to do an STBT trade in Biocon with a stop loss of 535 on the higher side for, with a, with a, for a target of around 520 and 500. Sorry, 620 and 615 on the lower side. If we talk about specifically for Sun Pharma, as I said earlier, it has given a breakout from its trendline resistance, which was at 530. So I feel, yes, it, it's st it is still a BTST trade. We can get targets of around 540 and 545 on the higher side. All right, so Sun Pharma looking good, uh, 540, 545 sort of targets that you can look for uh, for this one. So that's a, those are a couple of pharma stocks to keep your eye on. We'll take the last break then uh, for the show before we uh, get into closing, uh, get a few more trading ideas. We'll be joined by Vijay Chopra as well. And of course, continue the discussion with Pankhil and Forum. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching The Trading Day. Let's put the focus for the moment on one of the worst performing stocks of the day. This is HCC that we've been talking about through the course of the day. Shares at the moment are down 25%. This, of course, after an auditor's report on its subsidiary unit, that's Lavasa Corporation. Now, this report said that there is a significant doubt on the company's ability to continue its operations at Lavasa. The auditor's report has now raised concerns over Lavasa Corporation heading for bankruptcy. We have Ishita Guha joining in now with more details on this. Ishita what does this report tell us? 
Uh, well, the auditor's report in Lavasa Corporation has definitely raised concerns over the company heading for bankruptcy, which was probably the reason for such a huge fall in share prices of the parent company HCC earlier today. The auditor has a significant doubt on Lavasa Corporation's ability to operate going ahead. The auditor made a few crucial observations as far as the company defaulting on repayment to banks and other financial institutions is concerned. The auditor also said that Lavasa Corporation has defaulted on payments to non-convertible debenture holders as well. Interestingly, the lenders of Lavasa Corporation had in September last year invoked strategic debt restructuring scheme under RBI's old guidelines for resolution of stressed assets. After RBI's FEP 12 circular, the resolution process with the lenders has slowed down and the company is working on a plan according to the new framework. The auditor's report also highlighted that Lavasa Corporation's liabilities are more than the assets, roughly to the tune of Rs 2,389 crore. Given the auditor's observations, there are concerns that Lavasa Corporation, which has a debt of more than Rs 3,000 crore, could face insolvency proceedings and may even get admitted to the NCLT. Even in March, similar news reports had suggested that Lavasa Corporation may head for bankruptcy, following which shares of HCC, the parent company, had dived about 15%. We may see the company facing insolvency proceedings going ahead if the observations made by the auditor find stronger grounds. All right, Ishita, thanks for that. HCC is the stock in focus. Biggest fall in over two years for this counter, down 25% in today's trading session alone. So big, big concerns for that one. Vijay Chopra is also joining in from uh, Enoch Ventures. Vijay, good to have you. What's your reading of uh, the action that we've had in the markets today? And also specifically, if you could just touch upon a Sun Pharma because that clearly is a stock on fire right now. Four and a half percent up on that. Halol rumors are doing the round once again. What's your call here? All right, bit of an issue uh, with uh, Vijay. We'll just uh, try and go across to him. But uh, uh, Pankil, as we wait uh, to do that, uh, just run us through a couple of your trading calls. Which are the stocks that are looking good right now? Overall, I have three trading calls as of now. So first one is Ujjivan. Yesterday, we have seen a very good up move coming in in Ujjivan. And today, we saw a bit of a correction on the downside. And it did not break the yesterday's low. So I feel this can still go up. And we can see targets of around 440 and 450 on the higher side. So I would advise to buy uh, with a stop loss of 410 on the lower side for a target of 440 on the higher side. The next call will be an, uh, a National Aluminium. National Aluminium is very much on the sideways range. I feel there is some accumulation going on in the particular stock. So I feel one can go for a buy uh, with a stop loss of 79 on the lower side for a target of 83.50 on the higher side. The last stock would be ITC. We have seen a very good up move today morning also in ITC and since past two to three days we are seeing that up move going in. Uh, the only reason behind it, it is it is it has uh, given a breakout from the flag pattern on the daily chart so we can see the targets of around 295 to 300 on the higher side so i would advise to buy uh, itc with a stop loss of 280 on the lower side for a target of 295 on the higher side all right itc nalco ujjivan financial a few trading ideas uh, there from pankil pankil just come in on a few of these tire stocks they're cracking in trade at the moment we had mrf come out with numbers a short while ago on the back of that mrf uh, falling quite substantially Ciet is the other one jk tires apollo tires across the board seeing uh, quite a lot of pressure for this fact at days low for an mrf down over three uh, percent are you spotting any opportunities here or do you think that there's a lot more pressure still for these counters i feel there is a lot more pressure uh, would come in because uh, if we see the chart pattern of Ciet, Ciet is not crossing its uh, uh, supply zone which is at 1700 and since past two to three months that has not been crossed on the higher side. I feel this the pressure can still go on and we can see the targets of around 1520 and 1500 on the lower side by tomorrow or maybe, uh, maybe in day after tomorrow. So I would advise to go for short on uh, uh, Ciet with a stop loss of 1580 on the higher side for a target of 1500 on the lower side. All right, I think we have Vijay uh, Chopra through once again. Vijay, what's your reading of the markets? Uh, and uh, let me uh, talk to you about two big stocks. Uh, Sun Pharma clearly on the move right now, 4.5% up move on that counter. And ITC, uh, we are expecting some kind of move in this one. Has a, a move from about 260 to 285 odd levels right now. Do you see more legs to this? I think there are a lot of legs. It's not... Uh, that, you know, ITC has been absolutely quiet for a long, long time, and I think that you know once it starts moving, uh, it has the potential of crossing 300, 320. And uh, again, you know, I <coughs> think that you know it's a kind of a must-have stock in a portfolio. So long-term investors, yes, uh, if they want to get into the stock even now, I don't think it's a bad bet, and they can hold on uh, for a longer term. 
so ITC fantastic and the other stock you were asking was Sun Pharma I am waiting for Sun Pharma to cross uh, 540 545 and once it happens I think that you know 560 and 570 would be on the cards again you know a good large cap stock uh, sitting quiet for a long long time huge consolidation happened around you know 500 to maybe 520 odd levels the stock has been oscillating in, in 20 uh, 30 rupees only uh, but I think that uh, you know the stock if it is it starts moving and there's positive news around halol also if it comes and if it is actually there uh, probably 600 levels uh, would not be very far off all right uh, so that's the view as far as the sun pharma goes see good upside for that itc as well uh, doing uh, uh, quite well and expect that to see a good uh, long term move uh, as well in fact consumption as a theme has very much been in focus uh, let's pull up a quality uh, this uh, stock has of course been in focus we've been uh, bringing you you know the kind of updates that we've seen in the stock at days high up 10% on a quality above that uh, 50 rupees of a share mark so 51 is where we're at as far as the quality goes uh, forum just coming to you on this space is there anything that you like do you like a quality or is there something else that's on your data yeah so we like parag milk which is again into dairy products and the uh, brands like govardhan and go they are very well accepted in the market again if we look at the 3q numbers you know the company has posted very good set of numbers on the top line almost like 16 percent growth on the top line and if we look at the bottom line the company has recovered from a loss to the profit of almost 200 crores in uh, 3q fy18 again the company has come out with very uh, uh, new product called as a whey protein this protein is very much accepted in the market now the company has been selling this product on amazon and to various gyms and nutritionists so we are betting we feel that the company would uh, get very good tractions out of this whey protein again the very good thing that the company is doing is that it's focusing more on the value added products which is margin accretive and again the company is uh, trading at a very less valuations if you look at uh, the financials the debt of the company has almost been cleared compared to what it was like five times last year it's now at 0.3 times you know to, uh, debt to equity so we feel that the stock can go for re-rating and uh, we would like to give a very good multiple of like 20 times on fy20 to uh, bring it to the target price of 375 rupees so parag milk is something that we like from the dairy industry space all right parag milk is something uh, that forum is betting on just to highlight a couple of uh, other mid cap movers for you pull up uh, a manapuram finance seeing a very strong move in trade right now four and a half percent up on that counter uh, Pankil was uh, talking to us about Ujivan, would pull it, uh, pull up an Equitas uh, as well. That stock is also on the move uh, right now. Very, very strong move coming in on an Equitas and an Ujivan in trade today. Also pull up a PVR. That stock too is doing well. 3% up uh, on a PVR. HSIL is another counter that's in focus. Quest Corp is something that's been buzzing since morning. Container Corp too has seen some moves uh, since uh, today's morning session. So uh, these stocks uh, are also on the move as far as the mid-cap movers and shakers are concerned. Just a final question uh, forum before we let you go. Ashok Leyland is another stock that you're bullish on in the mid cap universe uh, up about a percent and a half right now the numbers uh, were good as far as the april sales go but it, they were slightly below street estimates and you saw a bit of a correction uh, a couple of days back on this counter as well but how does ashok Leyland look to you right now yes yeah, so we like ashok Leyland from the commercial vehicle side if we look at the monthly sales numbers the company has been posting very good set of numbers month on month and it's contain and it's sustaining its up move again if we look at the commercial vehicle space the entire infrastructure you know development and and the mining sector development so because of all these tractions the company has very good opportunities at the macro level again now if we look at the financials the company is reviving and the management is taking all the steps to uh, revive the company and become the leaders in the uh, space again if we see that the company is the company is very bullish on making new models and launching new models for fy19 and uh, if we look at the valuations we do not mind giving a little premium valuations given the opportunities in the sector and the company company has. Hence, uh, looking at the entire commercial vehicle space revival, we would like to have Ashok Leland as, as a top pick from the commercial vehicle space. All right, Ashok Leland is, is the top pick uh, there from Forum. Thanks so much, Forum, for joining us, sharing all your views and your stock picks as well uh, in this current market. Vijay, I just want to come to you on the metal space uh, because, you know, we've uh, broken a bit of a losing streak for this pack. Of course, uh, still some laggards, but largely seeing good moves for the likes of a Tata Steel, Vedanta, aluminum names in particular doing exceptionally well today. So, Nalco, Hindalco bouncing back after quite a while.